Good morning. We want to welcome Josh with us today. He's one of Hope's fabulous finds. As you can tell, Hope is on vacation as well as Pastor Jake, so we uh, pray that they're having a good week. There are, well, there's one thank you note that the church received. It's short and sweet. It's from one of our graduation uh, letters that went out. It says, Presbyterian Church, thank you for the letter. I appreciate it. Nico Hernandez. But very sweet. Two cents a meal is coming up on the 18th. The usher sign-up list is in the back. I did notice there's some names on it, so it's kind of our new way of signing up uh, for ushers instead of the postcard. So if you would desire a specific Sunday, please sign up for that. Are there any other announcements? All right, easy crowd. Then let's pray for preparation. Almighty and loving God, we bless you for the sheer privilege of joining freely with others to hear your word and sing your praise. Send your Holy Spirit to encourage, challenge, and correct us that we are equipped to be faithful servants. Amen. Let's stand for our call to worship. The Lord is my shepherd. God leads me beside still waters. God leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Our first hymn today is To God Be the Glory. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is out of the Song of Solomon. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds in the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, till he please. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping up upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, chewing himself through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said unto me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing birds is come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Our second reading today is out of Corinthians, and it's a very familiar one to us. It's chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. 
If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to the hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but there, where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflect reflection is in a mirror. Then we, see, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. So when Pastor Jake emailed me to ask me if I would do the service this Sunday, for the first time ever, I didn't hesitate because I had a subject matter in mind. Um, Kurt and I are now of the age that instead of a lot of graduation open houses, we are flooded with wedding invitations. So we have nine weddings this year alone. So on top of that, with speaking with... Um, some of our friends, uh, their daughter was getting married and uh, they live in Saginaw. He was raised Catholic, she was not raised in the church. They didn't know who to have marry them. So they asked if I would become ordained and do their wedding. So uh, Kurt wasn't real impressed, but I said yes. <laughs> so in planning their wedding, I did it uh, where I met with them a few times, because again, I'm friends of her parents, not really of them. So I had Corinne pick out a uh, scripture reading, but I recommended, ironically, not to do Corinthians, even though that's what I chose to read today. I wanted something more unique and something that meant, would mean something to her, because she would have to research it since she was not uh, familiar with the Bible. And then her fiance, Ryan, he did his own research and he picked out a poem of, it's called A Blessing of the Hands by a Reverend John Han. So I'll finish with that today. So this is part of what I did for their service. It says, marriage symbolizes the ultimate intimacy between a man and a woman. Yet this closeness should not diminish, but strengthen the individuality of each partner. Marriage is a lifetime commitment, which recognizes the negative as well as the positive aspects in life. Marriage's content is never predetermined. It is a living organism that reflects the continuous choices of the individuals involved. In Marion, 
We promise to love not only as we feel right then at that moment, but as we, how we intend to feel. In marriage, we say not only I love you today, but also that I promise to love you tomorrow and the next day and always. Love doesn't limit. Love brings with it the gift of freedom. Love teaches us to encourage the people we love to make their own choices, seek their own path, and learn their lessons in their own, on their own and in their own way. Love also teaches us to share our feelings and thoughts and with each other about these choices we make. We can then, we can then make decisions openly and freely through our love. That allows both to grow. Love means each person is free to follow his or her own heart. If we truly love, our choices will naturally and freely serve that love well. When we give freedom to another, we really give freedom to ourselves. In promising always, we promise each other time. We promise to exercise our love, to stretch it large enough to embrace the unforeseen realities of the future. We promise to learn to love beyond the level of our instincts and our inclinations, to love in hard times as well as those good times. We change because of these promises. We shape ourselves according to them. We live in their midst and live differently because of them. We feel protected because of them. When we are safe in marriage, we can risk because we know we are loved. We can step beyond our fears because we have chosen we can transcend our insecurities. We can make mistakes knowing that will we, not, we will not be cast out. We can take missteps knowing someone will be there to catch us. And because mistakes and missteps are the stuff of change, of expansion, in marriage, we can go to our fullest capacity. And this is the blessing of the hands. These are the hands of your best friend young and strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will not work, I'm sorry, that these are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and cherish you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold you when fear or grief fills your mind. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your face, tears of sorrow, and tears of joy. These are the hands that will tenderly hold your children. These are the hands that will help you to hold your family as one. These are the hands that will give you strength when you need it. And lastly, these are the hands that even with wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours still giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Um, so I was hoping on that wedding day that even though I don't know that church and God will be a part of their life forever, but that there will be some level that God will be watching over them and blessing their hands every day. As you all know, my Catholic background brings me back to Beatitudes. I found a set, it's called Beatitudes of a Christian Marriage. Blessed are the husband and wife who continues to consider it and affectionate long after the wedding bells have ceased ringing. Blessed are the mates who never criticize or speak loudly to each other, who instead quietly discuss their disagreements and work towards solutions. Blessed are they who thank God for their food and set aside some time each day to read the Bible and pray. Blessed are they who love their mates more than any other person in the world, who joyfully fulfill their marriage vows of in a lifetime of fidelity and mutual helpfulness to one another. Let's make a personal application together of the four Beatitudes in order to strengthen our marriages as well as those people contemplating marriage and those that we come across that are having hard times. Contemplating marriage is for better, for worse, and for keeps. Amen. All right. 
are their joys and concerns. Jean, he's coming for you. I have joys and concerns. Okay. Uh, Jeff Anderson and Jane have birthdays this week. And All also, right. uh, under health issues, remember Martha Bell and Helen Avery? They've kind of been under the weather, but they're both at home, and I talked to them this week, and they're, they're doing well. Good. Are there any others? Whoops, wait for, okay, whoops, Fred first, sorry. Yes, men's breakfast, the 19th, at, on breakfast, um, 8 o'clock. All right, now, Jane. And just a side note, too, for uh, my joys would be for this couple that I married. Uh, Amy has also done two weddings here this summer. So awesome, Amy. You are right. It was lots of fun. Um, and pray for all the joys for all the other weddings that are coming up this summer. There's certainly plenty of them making up for 2020. Are there any others? All right, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, there are so many sad and troublesome things to face in the world today, which too often cause our hearts to become weighed down with difficulties and doubts. But we pray that your joy would fill our hearts and strengthen our souls and that times of joyful laughter would replace those seasons of weeping and hardship. We pray that in Christ we may be clothed in strength and dignity, wisdom and grace, and that we may be enabled to laugh in the storms and not to fear the future, knowing that our times are in your hands. You have promised to draw near to each one of us and be with us in every circumstance of life that may come our way. We pray that your joy and laughter may flow through us to others who are facing similar difficulties and hardships, and that together we may maintain an ever-deepening trust in you. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Oh, thank you. Can we do happy birthday, Josh? Okay, we'll do we'll do Jane and Jeff. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jane and Jeff. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Les. <laughs> we should have made you do a solo. <laughs>
I just want it noted that I probably have beat Jim Baumgartner's shortest service ever. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord lift us to his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>